we uh, took our senior trip to Chicago. And everywhere we went in Chicago, first of all, they want to know where we were from because we sounded, you know, <laughs> the way we sound. So they're like, where are you guys from? Uh, so that was the first thing they'd want to know. And then we'd tell them where we were from because I live near Chattanooga. So we'd just tell them Chattanooga because even though we didn't live there because there wasn't any, you know, there wasn't no reason telling somebody from Chicago that you lived in Chickamauga, Georgia. So we said Chattanooga. So anyway, when they'd hear that, they'd go, wow, you guys are from Tennessee. How far is it to Florida? Everybody, everybody we would meet there. The first thing they would ask us, where are you from? The second thing is how far is it to Florida? Apparently everybody in Chicago and Illinois, I think we went to Indiana, Everybody up there is pretty enamored with Florida. Of course, I probably would be too if I lived in one of those places. No offense, but it would be, you know, cool to be able to go to a place where you have the ocean and the Gulf. Down here we have the Gulf. Uh, but you know what I mean. You have the waves and the beach and all that. Strangely enough, we don't usually, we usually go to the beach maybe once when we're down here. And uh, when we go, we go to fish, so. Um, but we're not like beach, you know, lay out on the beach kind of people. I mean, cause you know, I look like a can of busted biscuits. So that's not a good look on the beach. <laughs> we went to Florida a few times when I was a kid. And uh, <laughs> the first time we went, you know, we brought the whole family. And we didn't have, you know, we had like a truck, a pickup truck. And then you had like a cover on the back of the pickup truck. And we would ride in the covered back, you know. And uh, matter of fact, that I think when the first time we came down, we had like a mattress, like a twin mattress laid in the back of the truck. And then of course all your junk, you know, for the trip. So that was how we rode back. Now that was a really nice ride. Cause I mean, you could just lay down, you know. I don't think you could do that now and get by with it, but back then it was fine. We didn't wear seat belts, we didn't, you know, whatever. So we rode in the back of the pickup truck all the way down to Florida. Best ride to Florida I ever had. Of course, it was probably 90 degrees hot, but we didn't have air conditioning. So we, we didn't know it was hot. You could pull down the little side windows on the uh, camper and let the air flow through there. Nice, AC. And then when we got down here, we had my grandparents, so we had like everybody, you know, the whole family. It's like the Beverly Hillbillies going to the beach. <laughs> but anyway, we got down to the beach and we go to the beach for the first time. And my grandfather, <laughs> he had on his swimming trunks, a I don't remember what kind of shirt. He probably went shirtless. Men went shirtless a lot back then, regardless of what they looked like. All the men I knew ran around shirtless. If it was in the summer, if they were cutting grass, they were shirtless. Maybe that was just my family. But anyway, my grandfather, he got out and he was on the beach and he had on his dress shoes, black dress shoes and black socks and his swimming trunks. <laughs> That's what he wore to the beach. That was his beach look. So, I didn't, I, I, I knew you weren't supposed to do that. I knew better than that. Apparently he didn't. Or better yet, he didn't care. That's what's great when you don't care. You just wear whatever you want to. like this ensemble <laughs> to go to the beach. We would call or get on the internet and make reservations and reserve a place. And you know, I've got all this, you know, all these days off, you know, when I was teaching and being an administrator, but every six weeks we had a week off. So we could go in September and, you know, times like that. But when my family went, you know, my dad only had 
you know, whatever, like a week vacation. And of course, you'd always take it around a holiday so you can get those extra days or extra day or two. And he never reserved anything. <laughs> I don't like, I don't know if the phones didn't go to Florida back then or what, but we always drove into town, whatever beach town it was, you know, probably around the 4th of July. And we, we would get there in the middle of the night. Seems like every time it was the middle of the night. And we would be riding around trying to find a hotel or a motel with reservations. And inevitably, they would all be full. We'd have to go to six, seven, eight different places to try to find a hotel. Finally, we'd find one. I mean, it was a real, real struggle. It was tough back then to go on vacation to the beach back in the pioneer days and i know a lot of you people live up north and canada and all these places <laughs> so i don't know where you guys go to the beach or if you've ever been to the beach but where we go to the beach this area sometimes is referred to as the redneck riviera uh, LA sometimes you hear it called LA it stands for lower Alabama although I'm in Florida but we're pretty close to Alabama uh, so if you want to go to the beach I recommend the Redneck Riviera and if you really want a beach experience with all the bells and whistles and all the crazy stuff that goes along with it and all the partying and all the insanity you need to go to Panama City we don't go, we, we try to stay at a minimum two to three hours away from Panama City. That's too much for us. That's too redneck. Even I'm not that redneck. Don't get mad at me if you go to Panama. See, I say stuff like that and people will get mad and they will unsubscribe to my channel because their mama's got a condo in Panama City and they love Panama City. It's so nice. We've been going to Panama City since the 1970s. I'm just kidding. I'm, it's a joke. Can I, can I tell a joke? Can I say something without offending somebody or losing subscribers and all that kind of stuff? Is, can I? Is it okay? Because I promise you, if I got a free stay in Panama City, I wouldn't turn my nose up. I'd go in a heartbeat. <laughs> you might ask, was somebody really getting mad? Because you said something about Panama City and called it the redneck? Yes. Yes. Somebody is going to get mad. Some of y'all will say, well, you used the word redneck. You said redneck. That's offensive. Look, man. Em embrace the term redneck. Don't get offended by that. Well, that, that's what, you know, something about the South. That's not about the South. If you think you're redneck, if you think redneck's a Southern insult, you need, to, you need to get on YouTube more. There's a lot of rednecks all over, the, all over the world. They're all over the world. The world is covered up in rednecks. I don't know if you can see that place. Those people are retired. I can tell. You know how I can tell? They have a Lincoln Town car. Jeep Wrangler. Morning. The yard is perfect. They had a cat. They had a hot tub in the front. Man, that was a retirement pad back there. Wow. Wow. I would love to have that. I don't like hot tubs, but just the idea. I mean, it's obviously retired. 